I'm Jeff Baumgartner with Light Reading Cable. I'm pleased to be joined by George Salinger with Comcast. And we're going to talk a little DOCSIS 3.1 because that's really some of the big news here at Expo is going to be the reveal of DOCSIS 3.1. And you know, if you can kind of boil it down for us, what does 3.1 actually try to accomplish? Yeah, so I think that the main thing that DOCSIS 3.1 sets to accomplish is more efficient use of spectrum. And, uh, and, and we hope to do that in, in several ways. Uh, one of them is by improving uh, technical, technical things, a forward error correction. Uh, we have been using a forward error correction scheme, Reed Solomon, that is, was very good at the time we started with DOCSIS uh, 1.0. Uh, but now newer technologies have allowed us to run algorithms that are much more complex. Cable modems have a lot more power today, and so we can run much more efficient forward error correction. And that's one of the main changes, and that's going to allow us to run signals uh, in, with a much better signal-to-noise ratio as well. Uh, the second is uh, higher modulation rates, where we have been running 256 QAM, 64 and 256 QAM for a long time. Uh, we're now going to be able to go to uh, 1024 and 4096 QAM, um, at least in, uh, in a great portion of our, our plant. And so uh, these two things are going to improve the uh, capacity that we can carry over the same spectrum. And so it's more efficient use of the spectrum. The second is more cost-effective uh, implementation uh, by using things like OFDM that are widely used in other technologies uh, and, other, and other transport technologies. Uh, we think we're going to be able to leverage uh, a, a larger pool of uh, ecosystem vendors and therefore reduce the cost of the implementation. So these are the main two things. Now, Cable Labs is still working on the specs, um, you know, so there's still a lot of ground that needs to be covered. So how soon do you think it's going to be before DOCSIS 3.1 is real and we actually see products out in the field? Right. So like you said, we just started with the specs only a couple of months ago. And uh, we hope to be done with the specs uh, in, in the 2013 time frame. Okay. Uh, we hope to start seeing product in the 2014 time frame. It'll most likely start with CPE, CPE devices, uh, which is very good because then we can start seeding the market with three 3.1 CP devices, mm -hmm. and then over time, probably uh, later in 14, starting in 15, perhaps CMTS or CCAP equipment, it'll probably be CCAP equipment, uh, and and so we'll start hopefully start deploying in 14, and uh, much more deployment, and, and probably start uh, actually turning up. It's actually pretty sort of, quick. Yeah, it's actually the fastest development of a DOCSIS spec that we've ever done. Yeah, you mentioned CCAP, and CCAP is a project that you've been very closely tied to here for the last few years. So how does CCAP fit in with DOCSIS 3.1? Uh, you know, does 3.1 just kind of snap into CCAP? No, this is exactly what the, one of the design criteria for CCAP was, upgradability. And so when when the CCAP, uh, or when DOCSIS 3.1 is available for CCAP, uh, hopefully in the downstream it'll be uh, a firmware upgrade. Uh, we hope that that is possible, at least in some implementations. And, uh, and then eventually there'll be uh, burst receivers for the upstream. And then uh, at that point there'll be upstream line cards that will be 3.1 capable. And so at that point we'll switch the line cards and we'll upgrade them as, as we need the capacity. Now even before we knew about DOCSIS 3.1, we've been covering another initiative called EPON Protocol over coax. And that initiative, you know, which is uh, standard underway by the IEEE, has been talking about using OFDM as well, you know, which is now coming up as a technology that's going to be in 3.1. So the question is, you know, with Epoch, is it going to be complementary or competitive with DOCSIS 3.1, or is there room for both? I think they're, from a service perspective, they're complementary. Uh, from a technology perspective, like you said, there's many commonalities. In fact, one of the uh, hopes is that the PHY is going to be very similar or even the same if we possibly can. Uh, and, and so they're very complementary. They are targeting at least initially different services. Um, in the EPOC uh, case, uh, where it, it is a technology to extend the deployment of EPON services over, over coax, and therefore it's mostly targeted to business services. Uh, DOCSIS, however, has been, on the other side, has been mostly targeting residential services, although we have been using DOCSIS modems for a long time for business services, and, and probably at some point in time we could use EPOC for residential services as well. So there'll be room for both, you think? There'll be room for both, that's right. Okay. And they'll be very complementary. They'll use spectrum in different, or, 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 or different portions of the spectrum initially, and, and we'll see. There'll be another tool in our toolbox. Well, George, thanks a lot for your time today and walking us through 3.1. You're welcome.